Hi and welcome back, this is Achim from Inner Space Explorers and today our topic, very actual, is disinfection of dive gear and I will split this video into two videos, one will be about open circuit gear and one will be about rebreathers I think this is easier than putting both of them in one video and then overlapping things and making things difficult so um, yeah, this first one will be about open circuit gear. Before we go in the topic, I would actually like to talk about something else, and this is the channel in general, the, the YouTube channel in general, and this Patreon thing. The reason is that there was a, somebody complaining, you may have seen this discussion, that these videos are in English, and not in German, and not in Russian, and not in France, and not in seven different languages, etc., etc., etc. And when I said, well, ISE has like 95% of our followers and people involved in the organization are English speaking, so that makes most sense of us, and it's only, I think, 5% or so that actually are in Germany or based in Germany. The person was like, yeah, but you have all these followers and your Patreon channel, and you can hire somebody who does the translations, etc., etc. So I have to, to finish with this myth that I get rich by doing this. So, um, yeah, there's ads on these, on these videos, but I mean, <laughs> I have not 2 million followers, so um, the amount of money I make with this, including Patron, is far, far from, from serious money. This is a joke. So, and I'm completely honest and transparent in this. I started this Patron channel because I couldn't find the time to answer these hundreds of comments in YouTube. So my idea was put the work, so to speak, into Patron and the people that are really interested will join me on Patreon and I can talk to them. And the idea was to get at least that much out of this that I can afford to take a day per week off to focus on these topics. We never reached that even close. So the money I make with Patreon and ads and blah 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 is may maybe is enough to take myself one day per month, but even that's very questionable. So the reason I keep doing that, and from a financial perspective, I should stop that today. So I just want to be clear on that. I'm not complaining, but I just hate it when people are like, oh, you get rich with this, this is nonsense. So the reason I continue is, first of all, I like it, and second, I feel responsible for the people that actually follow me on Patreon and support me and I want to support them with what they expect and this is why I'm doing this and actually we found a good rhythm now so there's always a pre-release on Patreon every week and another one going live on YouTube every week so please if you don't like this English content I'm really sorry um, but this unless this starts to create a certain amount of money where I can probably hire somebody to put uh, subtitles or whatever in different languages under this. I can't do this and I won't do it. Alright, so disinfection of dive gear. In times of COVID-19 this is actually something a lot of people talk about. Uh, I mean in some areas of the world people are still diving, there's still courses going on, but then obviously especially dive schools instructors ask like, hey what can I do, As, like the rental dive gear for example. But nevertheless, also your personal dive gear from time to time should receive a disinfection. And the questions are always the same. How often should I do it? How should I do it? And what should I use for to, to disinfect it? So let's talk a little bit about these things. First of all, how often do you disinfect your dive gear? Good question. And I don't think that there is the answer. Obviously, it depends on how often do you use it. Um, and where do you use it? I mean, for example, a professional guy that's probably diving in contaminated water obviously does that more often than somebody that's a pure recreational diver diving salt water, uh, diving fresh water, or somebody that uh, takes a one week vacation once a year diving salt water. So, um, salt water is actually worse than fresh water. So, uh, when I do maintenance on dive gear that's used like once a year in salt water, that usually is way more crappy inside than material that's used more often and uh, usually more dirty and, and filthy than dive gear that's um, mainly used in fresh water. And especially somebody who's diving more often, so for example comes back from his trip to the Red Sea and then does a dive in a freshwater lake, 
every weekend the gear usually is better flushed and in a cleaner state than it is if somebody comes back and puts this back somewhere in storage probably still a little bit damp and then pulls it out a year later which is the worst thing anyway also for the dive skills so to give a, a, a proper answer here is really difficult um, I disinfect mine once a year um, I mean I dive a lot not this year unfortunately but generally I dive a lot so at least once twice a week and I don't rent my dive gear out. So my personal dive gear once a year, usually after a trip somewhere uh, in salt water. So in September, we are usually in Italy on the island of Elba to do a bit of private diving and exploration. So when I come back, I usually go through all my gear, do all the maintenance, and then at that point also do a disinfection. And um, when people think about maintenance, they usually think about the regulator and yeah, true, I mean, if this goes to a professional technician and it's taken apart completely and goes into an ultrasonic cleaner with a special solution, that is kind of disinfected. So it's nothing you have to do yourself. If you just want to disinfect it, you can obviously do that. Before we talk about how to do that specifically, let's quickly talk about the material you use to disinfect. So if you're based in Europe, um, what a lot of people use is this stuff. It's called Vircon S. Um, and that's widely available without any problems on Amazon, eBay, probably in your local pharmacy, drugstore, whatever. And that's recommended by a lot of um, rebreather manufacturers. And um, yeah, without glasses, that's fantastic. I think it's actually from the vet uh, veterinary um, medical supply shelf, so to speak. I mean, it's used to disinfect. Um, animal housings cages whatever but that's pretty good and um, if you're based in the United States then you probably want to use what's called steramine that's uh, it's tablets and I'll put a picture right here steramine is not available in Europe I tried that for a long time and then came up with the Vircon S I don't know why um, but that's the two things that I use and so just depending on where you're based, you know what to buy. For me, it was always important to use something that's not liquid. Because, for example, when I'm traveling, when I'm going to Egypt, for example, with the rebreather, I want to take a disinfect with me. And traveling with a liter bottle of liquid is a problem in today's time. So, I mean, if you have something that's powder or tablets, that's awesome. You can buy a bottle of mineral water so you know it's clean water. You put uh, the amount uh, that you need in this bottle shake it up so you have a solution and then you can use that to disinfect and what I usually use is something like this um, that's a sprayer and you can pump it so there's pressure in it and then when you press the button it actually um, comes out here in a very fine mist you can adjust that and the big advantage of that is that you get better coverage of a surface so for example also when, um, when you disinfect your suit we'll talk about it in a minute then it's you use way less um, of the liquid and the disinfect and you get good coverage of the surface and then you can wipe it off and that's way more effective than um, just wiping it off or something like that or with a brush or whatever I mean you need a way to apply it on the material small stuff you can obviously soak in a solution so what material do you uh, do you want to disinfect so we talked about the regulator so if you just want to do that you need to make sure that the disinfect doesn't go from the first stage through the hose into the first stage uh, from the second stage through the hose into the first stage so don't press the button while you do this and I mean the easiest thing is you put this somewhere high and this low or you leave this attached to the tank with pressure that's the safest way of doing it so you put the first stage on a tank put it on a pressure and then what I recommend is just soak the entire second stage in a solution i mean that can be a small bowl of disinfect that's not a problem i just have to let the dog in otherwise you heard this squeaking and weaving all the time come in yeah say hi to nana um so on a, on a regulator like that you can actually unscrew this uh, this part um but obviously there's a lot of regulators where you cannot take it off 
So the easiest way to disinfect it is just put it in a bowl, let it sit there for the time recommended. I mean, this says a couple of minutes. I mean, leave it in there for 10 minutes or whatever. Take it out, flush it with fresh water, let it dry in a cool place, and you're done. The second thing is your BCD. Doesn't matter what type it is. And um, if you've ever seen one of these bladders open, this can be an interesting place for whatever to grow. And um, if you follow ISE in our training, we sometimes recommend a breathing technique where you breathe through your inflator. And a lot of people unfortunately think that we breathe from the bladder, which is obviously wrong. So what we do is, I'll just demonstrate it quickly, it's completely off topic now. Um, but when you press both of these buttons at the same time, the gas from the low pressure holes comes in here, but obviously the, the air follows the, the smallest amount of resistance, so it doesn't go through the corrugated holes up the bladder, but it goes out here by uh, the mouthpiece. So what you can do is, when you press both of them, you can breathe from that bubble stream of fresh air that comes from the low pressure holes from the first stage and goes out here. Um, nevertheless, there's always a chance that there's gas from the bladder coming in here and mixes up with the fresh one because, as I say, you press both of them, so if there's gas in the bladder, it can come out here and you can accidentally take a breath. So it's a good idea to keep those clean as well, and obviously also to maintain it nice and clean and it doesn't uh, corrode inside and fall apart. So what you want to do is... Um, there's a couple of ways. I mean, you can simply press that button and let water in here. So, I mean, you could just spray in here um, or put that in a, in a bottle or whatever and fill it in. And then you have it in here, you shake it around, you let it sit for a while, and then you get it out. I mean, the other option is obviously to unscrew the outlet and the inlet and then fill it and let it sit. Or if you prepare a, a bigger solution, like in a bathtub or whatever, you can obviously um, soak it completely, but you have to make sure that the disinfection solution goes in the bladder and stays there for a while and actually reaches all the surfaces. So really shake it around, turn it over, and then make sure that you flush it with fresh water and let it dry out. To let it dry out, the best thing is to open these two and just let it sit somewhere, not in the sun, but on a warm, dry, well-ventilated area. So the other things that I like to disinfect is my wetsuit gear. I didn't bring the suit now, I mean all of you have seen a wetsuit before. So what I do is I turn it inside out, put it on a hanger, put it in the shower or outside somewhere and then really spray it with that stuff. So it gets good coverage and then uh, depending on what kind of inner liner you have, if it's uh, open cell neoprene or if it's uh, some sort of, uh, of liner, you can wipe it and then uh, wipe it off with a towel or with a brush or whatever and then flush it with fresh water. <clears throat> Actually in the shower works pretty nice. And then obviously booties, um, with booties I just close them up and I usually just fill them with solution and let them sit for a while. Um, makes them <laughs> way less nasty than, than they are usually. Um, you can do gloves as well and what I always do is my, my hoods. Um, so same thing here, I turn them inside out and I mean this one I use for quite a long time so if you, if you uh, maintain them well they actually last a long time and then uh, same thing, you spray it, um, you wipe it down with a, with a towel or with a rag and then fresh water, let it dry and then you're good. Another important one is the mask. Um, it's one of the most underrated pieces of equipment to properly clean and take care of. A lot of masks, when you look in them, are really nasty, dirty, filthy, and especially on this area. I just think that's better. I'll show you this. <coughs> just let it run. Just take one out of the. Just take one out of the collection. Um, I mean, this is, this is an old exhibition piece, that's not an actual mask, but it doesn't matter. Just... So, inside here, where the glass actually meets the, the corner of the, uh, in this case, rubber or silicone, you can see a lot of mold and whatever um, growing there, 
and this, ne this needs to come out. So the best thing here, uh, what you can do is, um, actually I don't know how this is called in, in English or what the, what the term is in English, but in Germany we have these tablets that are called Corega tubs, um, and that um, people use that have um, their artificial teeth that they can take out, so they put them in there overnight and that stuff spa sparkles, sparkles a bit and cleans the teeth. That's awesome. I'll actually put a, um, something in the video when I edit it um, for how this is called in English or if there's something in, in German it's Corriga Tops. So what works really well is you put one of these tablets in here, put a bit of warm water in it and let this sit overnight. Cleans it perfectly. Um, and then you can still take an old toothbrush or something and clean it out. And then obviously you can still use disinfect, but these tablets um, as their medical product and uh, designed to clean teeth, uh, artificial teeth, um, obviously disinfect as well. And that um, is a great way to keep your mask clean. And, uh, and that's actually something you want. I mean, your eyes are exposed to this environment. Um, and uh, yeah, you can get all kinds of nasty infections and whatever if you don't take care of your mask. All right, other than that, there's basically no gear that really needs disinfection. And uh, I hope that explains it a little bit. If you have questions, comments, please put them in the comment section. And if you're a rebreather guy, just click on the next video. There we talk about the rebreather that actually goes through one. And I'll show you how I do this. Thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.